Mariachi Estadio Pueblo High School from the Tucson Unified School District under the direction of John Contreras.
This is a performing ensemble. The hardest part of the last year and a half was that the, this group of young people were out there earning college scholarships by gigging. They couldn't do that this year. So I was really excited to hear from the director, Mr. Montero, said the phone's ringing off the hook. If you want to know more about it, he'll let you know as well. But they don't just get to walk in and say, I want to be part of a match at Slam. They must audition. They must be technically proficient on their instruments. They must know how to read music. They must know their theory. And then remember the rules that I had in place? Mr. Gomez has kept those rules. So they must be academically tied to what they're doing. Now, the reason that's important, I'm going to do a little segue here, is that I would still be a teacher happy as a clam at Pueblo Magnet High School to this day, were it not for founding this group. Because when I started with the idea of Mariachi Aslan, I had a band teacher say, when I invited him to be part of the program, oh, I can't be part of the, I can't teach the beginning trumpets because I can't teach music that's paid, played in bars for drunks in my classroom. And I had an orchestra teacher say, for beginning violin, um, oh no, I can't be part of that because I, I can't teach children how to play out of tune. So now think about those stereotypes and think about what they were communicating. Well, good, I don't want you in front of my kids if you have that kind of an idea, right? So why is it important that they are technically proficient? Why is it important that they dress the way they dress? Why is it important that they are connected to school? Because every time they pick up their instruments, it's an act against the oppression that some people have against them. because mariachis wear very distinctive trajes. There's vocabulary word number two. Traje, traje is a suit, right? And we all know when mariachis first performed, it was only men. We're way beyond that now. So when they first performed, they wore muslin or cotton garb that had little, they had little concern for dressing alike. They had huaraches, remember these were, these were musicians that came from the fields and from the hills, and they would come together and perform. After the Mexican Revolution of 1910 uh, and the ensuing post-revolutionary migration to Mexico City, these rural ensembles could for the first time afford to outfit themselves. And very quickly after that, when the Mexican cinema really took off in Mexico and the landed gentry would wear the traje, the mariachis adopted the traje because that was this, by the way, we're all wearing tuxedos. That's what it's considered. It's considered a tuxedo. So they chose the suit of the horseman, the traje de chavo. The gala version, or the party version, is worn by contemporary mariachis. Now let me tell you a little bit about why this is the case. Nico, would you step up? What's your name? Jorge. Jorge. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Hey. Jorge, what grade are you? Uh, freshman. Yeah. Incoming sophomore. Okay. Okay, Jorge, stand up nice and straight. Now, the traje of the mariachi, you will always see a traje de charro, because for the first part, look at the jacket. It's a small, some people would say, well, little jacket. No, it's not. This is a horseman's jacket. I remember charros dressed because they rode horses. So you can't have the long tuxedo tails, and you can't have a long suit because then it's going to be dragging on your horse, you're just not going to look good. So they wore the short jacket. It's gussied up with this nice vest. You turn sideways here for me, Jorge. Now, look at these pants. Right? Nice and fancy. And then look at the bottoms at the, at the ankles. Jorge, do me a favor, Nico. Just go around this table so everybody can see what it looks like around your ankles. Okay, just walk around that table right there. If you notice, if you notice, it looks like he's got too much pant. Bad tailor, right? It's a little too long for him. No, it's not. Because when he, Jorge jumps on his horse, he's a charro. You can't be a charro with high warriors. <laughs> right? So they're made that way. That's part of the distinction. Now, what are these buttons all about? You know what's your name? Leah. Leah? Leah. What grade are you going to be? I'm going to be a senior. She's going to be a senior. Oh. Where are you going to college? Um, I'm not sure yet. Where are you thinking? Um, somewhere out of state. Out of state. Okay. Now, what ended up happening, I can't talk about 
across the country, across the world. And I will tell you right now, per capita, there are more women mariachis than there have ever been. And in some cases, there are more women mariachis than there are male mariachis in some of the programs that I see across Texas, that I see in New York City, in Connecticut. And that happened, I can tell you firsthand, because right here in Tucson, Arizona, Mr. Contreras and I were part of a youth program that actually invited the first, it's almost embarrassing to say, the first young women to play in a youth mariachi program in Tucson, Arizona. And that happened in 1980 in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. And now look at how better looks and sounds. So, same components in the women's garden. So you have the, the, the jacket, you have the vest, and then you have the botonadura on the side. But typically, you will have a full-length skirt, okay, just to keep the femininity, and you know, they, they look good in that too. But I've also seen mariachis that are full, 100% women in mariachis that will keep the traditional traje alive. It's just up to you. Now, what are these buttons all about? Now they're just ornamental. But back in the day, remember these are chapa, these are horsemen. So what did you wear? You wore chaps. And the way you distinguished your social standing, how much, you know, now people wear a lot of gold. Back then they wore silver on their chaps. Those were the buttons that they buttoned their chaps on. So that was what originally was part of the traje. It's now morphed into its decorative design on, on the traje, but they had a function, and those were the functions. Mariachis, you also, you also top it off with patent leather boots because they look good on stage. And then this is very important. This is called a monio. A monio. Vocabulary word number three. You can track a monio. Now, you can tie the monio, but most mariachis nowadays will do the whole elastic thing, okay? Because um, then it's nice and universal, and then you can have your monogram put it on there. How about a round of applause for our monogram? Trumpet served a purpose. 
because in the 1920s in Mexico City, a radio station named XEW X -E had regular programming where they would have singers that, of the day that would sing and they would be accompanied by mariachis with no trumpets. But the broadcast technology of the day was such that it was hard to pick up the strings. So what they did is they added a mariachi trumpet to mimic the style of the violins and now it could pierce and you could hear the melodic lines on that radio broadcast. So it was added because of necessity, not because somebody had a brilliant idea, but we're glad that they did that. So the B-flat trumpet, same trumpet you'll see in a marching band and a jazz band, it is now part of the mariachi ensemble. Join us 
uh, and he would demonstrate what is the fourth of the original instruments of a mariachi ensemble. This is called the guitarra de golpe. And the guitarra de golpe is the mid, if you think of the vihuela as the, the snare, and you think of the guitar as the low, the guitarra de golpe is in the mid, okay? This is one of the original instruments of the mariachi ensemble. Mr. Fronteras. It's got 36 strings. The, the harp, think of it as a piano. It plays the bass and the melodic uh, uh, line as well. But it is central to what a mariachi does. You may not have seen a guitarron in the early 1800s, but you would have definitely seen a harp. You know.
Cautima México.
staple of mariachi uh, repertoire. There are three types of uh, rancheras, the ranchera lenta, ranchera valsiana, and then the ranchera romantica. So we're gonna do a snippet of each one of those, ranchera lenta, ranchera valsiana, and the third one will be ranchera romantica. I'm not gonna tell you what they are, surprise. <laughs>
Mariachi is uh, really a mixture. It's an al it's a amalgam of different musical influences, not the least of which is a German influence, where the Germans were in Veracruz. So we learned a polka or two. So we're going to play a polka. This was called Jezusita and Jehuahua. Those of you that don't speak Spanish, it's Jesusita and Chihuahua. <laughs> Thank you for being here.